What we're going to do is we're going to do a couple of activities using matrices to get to answers uh, in a hopefully more efficient way. So what I'd like you to do, just to start with, is think about some pairs of complex numbers whose product is purely imaginary. Two teachers who, with their students, help to explore different approaches to teaching further mathematics in the classroom. In this case, the focus is on ways of introducing new topics in further mathematics. Here, matrix multiplication. We've got two scenarios. The first scenario is, uh, you imagine running a pizza company. So this question is about what is the most efficient way of working out how much of each type of topping you need. Second one, Women's World Cup 2015, and it's about calculating the amount of points that each team gets. So again, is there an efficient way, mathematically, we could get the answer? I think the activities to introduce matrix multiplication were probably a little different than the way I would normally go about doing that. I think with matrices in particular, there's a risk you can end up being quite procedural in the lessons. You know, here's a matrix, here's another matrix, multiply them together. And there's a danger there that you end up getting to the end of the topic and the kids are still sitting there going, yeah, but so why do we have matrices? The questions are a lot different to, say, in a textbook, because the textbook explains exactly what you need to do. The questions we were using this morning you had to read it more and understand what you had to do. Wouldn't it be two, three, four that way? So you have number of three rows in the first columns because that equals the number of rows. Number of rows as well as number of rows in the first equals one column. So are you, are you having a, a discussion about which way around to do the two matrices? Yeah. Right, and you've gone for that. What's your thinking at the moment? Why have you gone that way around? Because we can multiply the each of these by each of these to work out the total number of toppings for each yeah, okay. one to get a one by four matrix. Okay, so you're, you're kind of thinking there's going to be the right number of things there yeah. to yeah. times those things. Yeah, yeah, looks good. And that should give us a one by four matrix okay. oh. with the total quantities of each type of topic. Okay. Conversations the students were having, um, they were definitely saying things like, I know I'm going to have to multiply the number of wins by three, the number of draws by one. Um, that would give me confidence that I could give a, a class that resource and they would be able to get into the problem in the right way and, and sort of arrive at matrix multiplication. So do you want to share what you've done in, in your pairs? Well, um, so you've obviously got the four teams and their results from the three matches yeah. played. So the yeah. first one right. would go So across. do you want to share what you've done mm -hmm. in, in your pairs? And then the pairs. second one would go down like that. Yeah. So and then, then you can count so it together. Yeah, so what we've got here would be the answer on the, on the other side. No, it can't be because it's four. You can't. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, because that goes across and there's three across. And then that goes down and there's three down. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Something that's possibly worth saying there is as teachers perhaps think about the amount of time we spend asking the kids to do things formally versus the amount of time we ask them to spend thinking more creatively where actually if you make a mistake it doesn't matter. We had a lot of work on, on your pieces of paper look a little bit like that. I had some discussion with people about whether this bit, this first matrix should go at the beginning or whether it should go at the end. I think the, the two activities were very easy to understand scenarios, good little hooks. Although the calculation, the individual calculations that the kids had to do, basically multiplying small numbers and adding them together, they were being done in a matrix form and you could therefore say, well, look, this is a motivation for matrices. When you're multiplying matrices, you need to make sure that the number of columns in the first one is the same as the number of rows in the second. So how would you describe the second matrix uh, in terms of its order or its dimensions? Uh, three by four, so, so three, three rows. Three rows and four columns. Yeah. Whereas the first one's one row and three. I think if I was actually doing that activity in a, in a full lesson, I would probably run into it think a little bit thinking about, well, I've got all this information about pizzas and pizza orders coming in in an ad hoc way. How could I represent that information in the most efficient way possible, first of all? Then I've got a matrix, and then you can start talking about how you manipulate the numbers, and actually matrix multiplication um, could do that. And we'll get minus 12 plus 6i is negative 6i. Here, a slightly different approach, this time with complex numbers. Some pairs of complex numbers whose sum is a real number, some pairs of complex numbers whose product is a real number. Okay, so on your whiteboards, just have a quick go, try and find a few pairs for each. Purely imaginary number. 
sort of adding complex numbers, you might do an exercise as a teacher and it can get quite dry sort of quite quickly. What's a great thing to do is that if you provide sort of an immediate challenge and an immediate question that students want to answer, sort of more motivated, where they can take the learning in their own direction, but also just some really great tasks that sort of make them make generalisations, actually just having a go at it themselves and trying to spot that pattern rather than sort of being led in their learning to do that. The value of I um, has to be the same, but one has to be negative for the other complex number, so they cancel out and it always equals a real number. Okay, so great. So would it always have to be a complex conjugate, which is what um, you've used? No, not necessarily. That could be three or any other number. Any other number. But as long as the I value is the same, but negative in the other complex number, it'll cancel out and always equal a real number. Great. Two add three i minus two. Yeah. yeah. So again, multiples of each other. Multiples are are square the complex number. You can't have an x value for the last one, can you? Um. One oh, unless them. unless one of them's. One yeah, of them, if one of them's a zero, then that's fine. So we need to make sure these two times together equals these two times yeah. together. It says we two yeah. positives because the negative would make that positive as well. So Especially ones number. where you've got all the same coefficient. Has anyone got an example where the product is purely imaginary, but one number isn't the multiple of the other? Isabel, have you got one? Um, we had six plus three i. Yeah. Multiplied by two plus four i. Six plus three i, and two plus four i. So there's two examples there where it is a multiple as such, and then there's one example where. It's a different relationship, maybe not sure what that relationship is at the minute, but when we expand it, we get a product of 30i. 